Hello, hello, and good day, everyone! Welcome to Dragon the Agent Gates Glitch Tutorial Episode 73 Part 2, where we are going to learn how you too can access the balcony of Jade's Aporium, which was something that Swords Are, aka Outlaw Rivern, over on GameFAX told me to share to the world if I ever did figure out how to get up there. Um. Though, um, I never did get the Fable Bookstack method to work. Instead, I found a completely different way, which seems to be far easier, because I... We all could... Just couldn't get that Bookstack method to work. So I'm, just, I'm sure this is far easier. Even if we did learn what the Bookstack method was, or how we do it. But before all that, I want to show you guys uh, something... Uh, that I just kind of learned here myself. I don't know why I didn't realize this. Uh, but in one of our recent episodes where we made Jade's Emporium and a Castle of Sardana go boom with explosions, I found that you can also do the same with Rin with the spell Fireball. After casting a few spells over to the Castle of Sardana, we should have the spells stored, uh, in their uh, absorption barrier. And there we go. Now we can also uh, use the cheat code to change the levels of our spells back to level one, level two, level three, uh, all over the place to kind of decorate it with a, a variety of different uh, spells. Given that all the other spells have a limited range and Fireball has an indefinite range, we can do that to decorate the castle with some of those explosions. And we can do the same with uh, Jade's Emporium over here on the staircase, or on here on the rocky ledge. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go over some history surrounding the balcony before we get there ourselves. Head Huntress from GameFAQs and Arox Lair is the one, is one of two people uh, that I am aware of who claim to have made it to the balcony using the bookstack method. The other person being this so-called discoverer who posted their method back around September, October of 2002, as mentioned here. Also, as you can see, Head Huntress is the one that contributed this, this information. However, well, one thing though, I'm surprised that no one on Arax Lair asked Head Huntress for the discoverer's username or a link to the supposed board that the original post came from. It's almost common knowledge when someone uh, posts something like this, especially if all of us are failing to ask, okay, uh, who's the discoverer and what's this post? I would like to see it myself. Now to give some validity to this, uh, looking at what was posted earlier by Outlaw Rivern, it seems that others had attempted this alongside Head Huntress using the Discoverer's post as a reference. So, as a second party there, shows that they didn't uh, try learn this from Head Huntress. Instead, they were using this post by the Discoverer. So, this Discoverer existed. He, this person existed. Uh, it also hints that Head Huntress accomplished this over a year ago, which based on this, this timestamp uh, would have likely occurred at some point in 2003. I, uh, I can only imagine that at some point between 2003 and 2005, the discoverer, their post, or even the form it was from was somehow deleted which is probably why we can only use Head Huntress's recollection of the Bookstack method over in Gelbot's guide on GameFAQs. Otherwise, we all could have been using the original source post by the Discoverer, but sadly, it is, it's gone and wasn't documented. <sighs> Regardless of this, we all have been trying our hardest to use the Bookstack method which I wonder how many of you actually have tried using the stacks of books in Jade's Emporium in attempts to get to the lower balcony. Well, 
given the extremely low success rate, uh, a couple of others have tried different methods. If we look at these two comments from Arax Lair by Faerith and Outlaw Rivern, Faerith went about clipping through the interior walls of Jade's Emporium and succeeded, while Outlaw Rivern tried to clip through the exterior tower with Arak, but no success. Now, if we combine these two, uh, using Favorite's method first, followed by Outlaw Rivern's, we can essentially get to the balcony. Though mine involves a few minor tweaks. Now, let's get to that balcony. First things first, Head Huntress promised us that crates, barrels, a chest, a rusty sword, and some potions are up there on the balcony for us to ransack and pillage. The items are insignificant, but when it comes to a collect all the gold playthrough, it is just too tempting to pass up. If it wasn't seemingly impossible to perform the book stack method, even looking up there, surely I could see the tops of some barrels if there was some loot to be had up there, lest they be turned on their side out of view, uh, regardless of whatever vantage point we use. Also, there are two windows, not just one. <laughs> uh, when Faerith successfully bypassed out of here and made it to the outside of the balcony, he found an outside window which he peered through and found no treasure and claimed it would be impossible to have loot up there based on the width of the balcony. Head Huntress counters with looking up at the tallest book stack and compare it with the lowest balcony, which I do have to agree uh, that yes, I could see if a chest was turned on its uh, as if the back of a chest was up against the wall up there, then yeah, I could see a chest uh, having room to be up there. Uh, she also said that there is no window on the outside, which is also true if we go by the exterior wall of the tower. As we know from part one of this episode, bypassing out of buildings, like the ones in the town square, will unload the exterior. So let's do exactly that. Unlike what Faerith did, we will be utilizing sideways tunnel flips and rolls to get out of here. Uh, so there are three locations that we can actually uh, do uh, the phantom rolling glitch. One location is over here in the, uh, this corner, uh, which we can use the book stack here to our left and the wall here to perform the necessary uh, rolls to be able to do a phantom rolling glitch. The other location is over here. Uh, let's roll out of this. Thank you, Rent. It's over right here. This one can be hard to start. I just got lucky there. Uh, but it can be hard to try to uh, start. Uh, because most of the time, you're going to be having trouble getting Ren far enough into the wall to utilize here. Uh, but if you do get it and you have a weapon equipped, you can basically do, do this glitch almost every single time without any difficulty. Now, over here, however, is the one I want to go ahead and use. This one tends to be pretty successful uh, most of the time. And one thing I do want to note to you guys, do not roll to the right. This is the main reason why I want to showcase this one, is basically do not roll to the right. Whatever you do, do not roll to the right because there is no, there is no floor to the right. And because there's no floor to the right, you'll get stuck inside the wall. And you definitely don't want that to happen. Oh, let's see, did we get it there? Nope. Let's go ahead and try a few tries and see if we can get this to work. Okay, I got it to work. So what we do here is we just go ahead and roll out a here. And voila, we're on the outside and we can proceed our way to Arak. Now, I do want to note that Faerith did actually manage to get up there with a turbo controller 
using the outer limits, I guess. Though I'm not sure if this is the proper location, given that uh, the outer limits doesn't quite really exist here. Uh, so it's a mystery to me. Though I would like to have a turbo controller, I don't have access to one, nor do I really need one at the moment. So let's go ahead and head on down to Sierra. So now begins our next phase. First, let's save the game. The reason why I saved the game is, is because there is a risk involved when exploring the interior of Jade's Emporium with Arok. However, uh, we're gonna use a straightforward approach where we basically mitigate the risk to basically not even, it's not really much of a problem. It's just more of a problem if we actually explore Jade's Emporium's interior in its entirety, which we are not going to do. However, we will showcase uh, the risk as well as how to resolve it later in the video. As of right now, let's go ahead and head straight to the tower. So Outlaw Rivern was so close. He was so close. Had he done what Faerith did and also tried to clip in with Arok, he would have got in. I, I guarantee you, uh, Outlaw Rivern would have been able to get in and would have been able to get onto the balcony. And same thing for Faerith if he got to Arok and, and figured out that you can actually uh, land with Arok up here. Yeah, you can land Arok up here. In fact, there's a platform all around here that you can explore on that's about as wide as the foundation uh, of the exterior foundation of Jade's Aporium. Which is cool. I can land Arak up here and we can also showcase a few images I want to share with you guys by Faerith. This is uh, back in uh, the forum on Arak's Lair. Uh, and the same topic I've been pulling these comments from. These images showcase this exact same spot, this exact same window. And Faerith was so close, and, and if you look down, you can even see the tallest book stack, just barely. But, uh, sadly, there is no way for Rin to roll or get into the windows. No matter which window he, she chooses, she can't get inside. Even if she backflip up here, and goes up to here, she can't actually get on here. Even if we were to backflip or side flip or even a uh, even a front flip, there is just a wall that prevents Ren from getting into those windows. However, we can force our way in with Arok. All we got to do is hold to the side here, hit triangle to have him fly, and then oh, uh, oh careful Arok, you might turn invisible here. I do not want you to turn invisible. Okay, let's get back down, fly up. We're gonna press triangle and then we're gonna strafe into the tower here. And while we're strafing, we're gonna press X repeatedly. This will help force Arok in. And once when we get Arok in far enough, we can just simply descend down and land. Let's back Arok up a little bit, dismount with Rin, and mm -hmm. voila, we are inside the balcony of Jade's Emporium. Let me save the game here. So I saved the game here because I still want to have access to Arok. Because I want to show you guys, just go ahead and call Arok. Arok. And he'll fly away. Just be careful that his wings don't push you out of the tower here. But here we are. Now we can explore to its fullest extent. And I am just really kind of bummed out because I was promised many things. I was promised many things and I have one very, very important question for uh, for Head Huntress. One very important question. Where is my super suit? Seriously though, I come up here expecting so many things to come up here and I come up here and it came with our packages, boxes, or bags. I, I guess Faerith is right from this perspective up here. There really isn't a room to have a chest up here at all. I mean, maybe right here, but 
you would Dave you would had to uh, jump over or at the very least place the chest over like uh, up against the wall here and then just walk on this side over the chest but then again you still wouldn't be able to walk around it it's way too narrow I mean this is the this is the space Ren has to work with and with the width of the chest that's just not really possible heck I'd probably be more realistic of this yeah So, no, even if you were to reference, like, the book stack comparing that to right there, there's just not enough space for there anything to really be up here. Huh. Just think about it. All that effort, all that effort you, you do to come right up here, and... You get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! I mean, I thought I was gonna be rewarded with something! Anything? Jade? Anything? Up here? I can have? Please? Huh. <sighs> I mean, think about it. it. Even if the book stack method were to work, and I kind of uh, like what Faerith said here. Is the treasure even really worth it? I mean... As I said before, it's not that interesting, and, uh, but its only value will be in an old gold run, but even then, it's nearly next to impossible to get up here on the balcony for the book stack, book stack method. <sighs> I mean, if I were to put it in the words of, uh, Markiplier, I remembered in one of his videos. That wasn't even worth it. That wasn't even remotely worth it. That wasn't even remotely worth nine and a half hours of work! <sighs> well, in any case, let's go ahead and enjoy it while we can. Let's have a look outside. Again, the window is really low here. I was hoping the window would be a little bit higher so I can get a little better perspective, but that's not the case. If I get closer, I limit even more of my view. I was hoping to get a good view looking out with my bow, but I'm not getting any of that. So I had to stand back and just go like this. Or either that, or walk up to it and then just angle my camera a bit. But this is the balcony, everyone, and now you can do it too! There are a few more things I need to show you, which is also exactly the reason why I saved. Uh, I can go ahead and collect Arak if I want to by exiting out here, calling him, and going around, uh, which we'll experiment with later. Uh, but right now, let's go ahead and load to our previous save here. So getting back onto Arak here, I want to show you guys how we could potentially get up to the second balcony, though I have had little success, and I think I know why. So, to get to the second balcony, what we do is that we're inside the balcony here right now. We just press uh, triangle to fly up, and he, Arik has trouble trying to get out of here, which is perfect, that's exactly what we want. He can't easily fly out of here. What we're gonna do now to have him ascend up higher, I can't just spam triangle to do it, but if we spam both triangle and X at the same time while uh, strafing, we can actually have Arak slowly start rising up. Just keep spamming as fast as you can. He will juggle around a little bit up and down sometimes, but most of his momentum is going to be going up, so just keep at it. It can be exhausting after a while, so take a break if need to. See how he's having some resistance and going up? We can still make him go up higher. But let's go ahead. Oh, that's that's enough. That's enough. And try to descend down here. I have had some uh, animations of Arik trying to land up onto the second balcony, but for the most part, it hasn't been really that much that successful. I'm trying to see if we get the camera in here so we can have a look inside. Then let's turn Arak this way and see if we can get a better angle maybe over here. 
Come on. Get in there. There. Oh. Yeah. Turn, 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 turn. Ah. There we go. Now we can have a little bit of a look inside of the balcony we could have potentially be walking on up there. But sadly, we don't... I don't... Okay. The reason I believe that we can't really land up here with Arok, even if we get the animation, is that the invisible... Uh, uh, the invisible platform up here is too small. It's only the circumference of the balcony itself. So even if Arok tries to land, the sheer length of him is too much. So he can't get, so he can't get in, so he can't actually land. He'll try to land, but he'll be interrupted because the space is too small for him to land. But we can go almost as high as we want here, however, you need to show some caution here. Because if you carelessly keep uh, forcing him up, well, this is what's going to happen. Let's try to get our glow higher. There we go. He can't fly up. He can't descend down. Uh, he is now stuck here forever. He is trapped within the top of uh, Jade's Tower. Heck, if we loaded in uh, Jade's Tower, Arik will be t uh, trapped uh, near the uh, top of the tower. It's almost like a personal cage for him. Well, regardless of learning to do the triangle and X would, uh, is going to be important later on as a further, uh, a further points against, uh, Head Huntress claims about making it up to the tower and all possibility. Let's go ahead and load back to our previous save. Now, say if we wanted to collect... Say if we did have Arc fly off, but we didn't want to load to a previous save, we actually want to go and collect him. So what we do now is that we leave out of here. Arc actually can't really Arc land up rip. here himself. Ah, Arc! You bastard! <laughs> you knocked me off! Ouch! Ouch! Okay. Ugh. Really, Arak? Why? Okay, uh, let me out of here. Okay, let's go collect Arak right now. So we're gonna send down here, and okay, I'm gonna heal here. That was unfortunate, Arak. Why? Going out, out here. Arak, come here. I hear you. Get him out from around here, and. There is plenty of space for you to land. Maybe not a lot of space up here, but why don't you come over here? I have every reason to! All right, moving on after that little fiasco, let's talk about that risk I mentioned earlier when exploring the interior of Jade's Emporium with Arak. That risk being that Arak has a chance that he could turn invisible. This... Uh, is a problem, given that I can't move Arak at all. However, we did talk about this. This is not un this is not unlike what we encountered way back in episode 16, link in the top right-hand corner, in which we were exploring the Anywhere Mountain Bypass glitch, and I talked about this risk, this issue, that Arak can get frozen in the Outer Limits when we pan the camera out beyond the outer limit, putting that outer limit between Arok and the camera. I can toggle through Arok's special, but I can't really do much of anything else. I can't even access my inventory. However, I can thankfully pause and load to my previous save, which there, as we discussed back in episode 16, the causes this happened, which basically was I entered Jade's Aporium, which is a building, and it had a loading disc. The loading disc is what causes the Outer Limits to be a nice, safe playground to an unsafe playground. And we want to make that playground safe again. And which all we need to do is follow what I said in that video, in which case we're going to use uh, the Mother's Eye to access whatever place I currently have it set to, and come on back. We have passed through the gate and so that should rectify the problem. And important to note, any 
uh, interior of a building that you load in will stay loaded in even if you pat even if you exit the level and come on back this is perfect because then we can go ahead rectify the outer limits issue which they yep we did rectify the outer limits issue and we can now explore the interior without any worry of Arak freezing in place. Okay, now let's talk about two methods that you can get up to uh, Jade's uh, Emporium. First method is basically going up onto this ledge here. And then we're going to back Arak up, ram right through to get up on top of here. Uh, he's turned invisible uh, here. Crap, I do not want him invisible. Arak, can you uh, kindly load in place here? No, thank you. Oh, okay. There is a risk to that. Um, but we're going to uh, move Arak up here and walk forward. And then we're going to get him inside here. Now, he has a risk to actually getting stuck in the bookcases, in which case we can go ahead and use have him fly to get out of here. He's not restricted on that sort of movement. And then we can attempt to land Arak down. But there is a far easier method aside from the one I just showed you here. The second method is not only easier, but you don't even have to mess with any outer limits. So all you do is fly up here and we're going to fly towards the entrance just below the balcony. This should load Arak in. And then it'll pop him up here. We're then going to move Arak over here to give him some breathing room so that we can finally be able to land him down. And voila, here we are, right up inside Jade's Aporium. Now let's go ahead and save the game, as we got some things we need to discuss. All right, Jade. Eager for more magic, are you? Good. What is it you wish to learn? I would like for Arik to learn a new breath attack. Can you do that for me, please? Come on. Surely you got some magic they can teach a dragon. Come on! Go with my blessing, then. I don't want your blessing. I want a new breath attack for Arak. Huh. So, I couldn't have Jade teach Arak some new breath attacks. Well, I'm a bit disappointed, but not it was not all unexpected, given that I more did that as a joke. <laughs> but uh, the only other thing that I have time for to show you guys now is how to get out of here. How to get out of Jade's Emporium with Arak. Well, one method is just simply get off Arak, call him and have him fly out like I did up in the balcony and then go out to collect him. Uh, but the thing is, if we go out normally at, through there, we can encounter an issue with Arak where he flies into an outer limit. If he flies into an outer limit on his own, he ha uh, and these invisible outer limits, he could disappear on you. And when he does, he no longer on, exists on the outside, he exists on the inside only. Which that means you have to come back in Jade's Emporium, perform the Phantom Rolling Glitch out of here, and to collect Arak. Sometimes he'll even be landed somewhere uh, on top of some invisible platform or whatnot. Otherwise, you just need to get out of there and call him again uh, from inside and try to navigate him away from the invisible boundaries. But usually you'll probably have a save outside they can simply load back to because uh, there's really nothing up here for Arak. It's just a fun place to explore. But if you did want to leave with Arak, there is an easier way which is the same method we used to access, well, somewhat access the second balcony. So we go off in this corner over here. I like this corner because Ark can really get further away from the perimeter of the balcony, making it easier for him to leave. So we're gonna fly up with Arak. Let me try to strafe him. There we go. Uh, and we can fly up with Arak by just spamming triangle and X repeatedly because <clears throat> he can't get out of here normally. No, he has to perform another glitch to get out of here. You glitched in here, and so you got to glitch out of here. And so we just keep spamming X and triangle. We can also do the same thing with having Arak flying forward. But we can have Arak just leave out of here like this. 
by keeping Arik away from the balcony as much as possible, we can actually have him fly out of here pretty easily. But aside from that, that's all I have time for this uh, right now, as we'll continue things in an unprecedented part three. <laughs> Wow, I'm sh I'm shocked as to how long this uh, episode has been going on. Gosh, I I've been probably going close to an hour with this. Jeez. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was going to be a bonus episode at first because it was mostly going to be an argument. that A, a couple of arguments and with evidence uh, against... Head Huntress's claims of accessing the balcony. Just some issues with that that I find that just makes me question if she was up there in the first place. Uh, as well as uh, just talking about my thoughts about the book's deck method in general. Aside from that, it, all, it is also featuring a glitch that I was going to feature in here, but sadly, I just don't have the time to showcase it. Uh, lest I'll let the video go on for too long. So, with it being in that episode, it is no longer a bonus episode, but it is now an official part three. Huh. <sighs> so, my apologies to you guys if you don't like that it's being divided into uh, part threes. I'm kind of also against it in a way, but it, it is also makes the most sense. So... To kind of make up for that, I am going to, uh, before I conclude, well, after I conclude things here, I'm just going to do a quick showcase of basically step-by-step -step of getting up to the balcony. This time, no stops, no posting of pictures or anything, just straight up, here's what you do, uh, point by point by point to getting up to the balcony. Uh, that way, I'm going to just uh, set a time in the video for you guys to easily access that if you ever just want a quick reference getting up to the balcony without all the filler. With that being said, I will see you all in episode 73, part 3. Like, comment, subscribe. And as always... Have a great life, everyone. All right, guys. Here's a quick rundown with how you can get up to the balcony without any filler. But I do have to first and foremost say that if you have skipped to this point without watching the video in its entirety, what's wrong with you? Go back and watch the video. It's good. It's funny. It's educational. And I worked really, really, really hard on it. So please, go back! I beg you! But, if you still wish to continue, or you have already done so and watched the video, which I really appreciate you for that, thank you! Um, let us begin the rundown. Alright, so the uh, we need to perform a phantom rolling glitch in one of three locations, which we're going to choose a location right over here. In this location, we do not want to equip a weapon. Uh, we want to de -equip, not be equipped, and we're going to then perform Phantom Rolling Glitch until we get far enough into the ground. And then, we're then going to roll off over here, because we can take the hit, and we just want to get up to the balcony. Speaking of which, we're not even going to go into the Mother's Eye to revert and make everything safe, because we can just simply go straight to the tower. So we need to fly about this high up to the tower, load everything in. Once when everything's loaded, we can then descend down and land. We then will turn our parallel with the wall to the balcony. In which case, once we press triangle, we'll immediately strafe into uh, the balcony. And once when Arc's like this, we then press X repeatedly until he is finally inside here. Once when he's in far enough, we then can just simply land Arak down. Now keep in mind, Rain can be pushed out, so let's back Arak up, and then we can dismount with her. After that, we can then just call Arak to leave You're out of here. If he doesn't leave out of here entirely, you can just call him again, and he should be able to move out of here. Just like that. And from there, we are finally up here in the balcony, and now again, you can do it too. 
There may not be anything up here, but at least now you can claim that I too have been up at the balcony. And that's it. That's all you need to do. So, guys, as I said before, I really appreciate you all for watching my videos. Guys, thank you so much for watching me up to this point, and I will continue uploading more videos for you, and I'll see you all in episode 73, part 3. Catch you later.